Kim, what's on your radar? Protect democracy. This is what we hear over and over as to why we're invo involving ourselves between two neighboring countries 6,000 miles away while risking escalating a nuclear war. Ukrainians need our help fighting against a brutal dictator who controls the press and squashes dissent, they say. Now, that might be true about Putin, but oddly, the very man, Zelensky, who was supposed to be protecting fragile Ukrainian democracy, just banned 11 opposing political parties and nationalized all news to ensure the only message people hear is, quote, unified information. Yes, the man who is supposed to be protecting democracy just got rid of it using emergency powers under martial law. One party he banned, the For Life Party, holds 43 seats in Ukraine's national parliament. It's the largest of the opposition parties and even condemned Russia's invasion. But as of right now, they're suspended, all because we're protecting democracy. This illogical rhetoric would be typically mind-bending, but we've heard so much illogical propaganda these past couple of years, many of us are desensitized to it by now. Nothing makes sense anymore, but we could still try. So try to make sense of this. The 11 political parties Zelensky banned are mostly considered left-wing. The Opposition for Life Party, which I just mentioned, Sharij Party, Nashi Opposition Bloc, Left Opposition, Union of Leftists, Derzava, Progressive Socialist Party of Ukraine, Socialist Party of Ukraine, the Socialists, and Volodymyr Saldo's Bloc. Many of these parties are anti-war, against joining any foreign military alliance, and call for better, re better relations with their Russian cousins. And by the way, I say cousins because that's what they are. It's important to remember that 11 million Russians have Ukrainian family. Putin's own goddaughter is Ukrainian. These two countries are very intertwined. In the address announcing the ban of the parties, Zelensky stated, the activities of those politicians aimed at division or collusion will not succeed, but will receive a harsh response. Therefore, the National Security and Defense Council decided, given the full scale of war unleashed by Russia and the political ties that a number of political structures have with this state, to suspend any activity of a number of political parties for the period of martial law. So there you have it. War is the excuse. Now, I get that Ukraine is at war, and I deeply sympathize with the Ukrainian people dodging bombs because their government is corrupt and under the influence, the influence of money, that is. And that's same same for the Russians. It's a, you know, both sides are very extremely corrupt, and they're fighting, and these average citizens are trying to dodge everything that's going on there. It's tragic. But when you begin to strip people of their political power, their right to vote, and the right to voice their displeasure, you undermine democracy. So as many sit here and advocate for a war under the pretense of we're fighting for Ukrainian democracy, it's literally being stripped from the Ukrainian people as we speak, and not exactly by Russia. So if banning political activity from the opposition isn't bad enough, Zelensky also has stripped Ukraine of free speech. In an effort to combat misinformation, Zelensky has announced information-based content will be streamlined into United News. So basically, Ukraine has now become a one narrative nation with essentially one political party, real democratic. The problem is so many justify this activity because once again, it's wartime and extreme measures are necessary. Ukraine is not alone in this. Russia is also banning anti-war information and jailing dissidents, but that's supposed to be expected. After all, we're siding with Ukraine because we're helping them preserve democracy from Russia, even though they're now acting just like Russia. But whatever, we're not supposed to try to understand it. Just like how we're not supposed to try and understand why several very ultra-nationalist neo-Nazi supporting Ukrainian political parties get to remain functioning while leftist parties are being banned. It doesn't matter. We're on the side of the good guys, they say. Now, I want to mention, I am not just picking on Ukraine on this one, guys. Uh, this is anti-war voices have been silenced and jailed since uh, the beginning of time, I would imagine. Here in the United States, uh, we have jailed anti-war voices since World War One. We jailed, uh, we even have jailed during the Vietnam, I mean, every single war, we have gone after people who are anti-war. There was the Boston Five during the Vietnam War where they, uh, you know, they were trying to, to kind of talk to young men on how they could avoid military service and they ended up serving prison time for that the world for whatever reason is extremely against people who are against war and if you're against war you're a putin puppet we've heard this a lot from the people who are saying this war uh shouldn't be happening because you, you know ukraine needs to maybe go to the table and actually negotiate with their cousins and i meant that literally people need to remember that this is more akin to a civil war than it is 
one country just wanting to take another country. These people are related. Again, Putin's own goddaughter is a Ukrainian. So this, it, you know, but the, the war machine, and Ryan has talked about this numerous times, the war machine, you know, the drums just keep beating on and on and on and on. And everybody just wants to march towards war. I mean, Face the Nation was crazy this past Sunday where the host was grilling the U.S. ambassador, uh, the China ambassador here in the United States. You know, it was like, why aren't you doing more uh, against Russia? What, what do you, you know, so we're hearing this constant war drum beating. And if you're against war, you get jailed. You get silenced. You're anti, uh, you know, you're, you're, an, you're, you're not a patriot. You're even potentially a traitor or treasonous. I, including by Russia, right? Ru Russia is jailing anti-war dissidents yes. right yes. now. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mentioned that. So Russia's doing it. But that's expected. We say that's, well, that's Russia. That's why we're fighting against Russia. That's why we can't let Russia win, because they're anti-democratic. Yet Ukraine literally did the very things that Russia does. And and we don't have any right to sit here and say that we're any better because we we do it too here in the United States. Right, but it's a rather critical. Well, well we don't. We, are, we don't. No, no, no. Yeah, we don't. Jail we are that. better. <laughs> we are better. definitely better. We do not. not by, I, I mean, mean, today we, we do not jail people like that. Like they've criminalized basically any yeah. any social media post. They're like no, no. like our the Russian the Russian restrictions on anti-war activity are right. much more draconian. I mean, the, the Ukraine those Ukrainian restrictions are also more draconian. The, right, but no it, one is banned. You're not banned but here. A, a, Actually, a, a critical detail you, though is that Russia invaded Ukraine. Like that. Sure. Like, so it's not a civil war. Like Russia in, Russia invaded Ukraine. Yeah. We we accept a lot of restrictions on individual liberties in the military. Like we we have just accepted as societies across the globe that in order for a military to be now there 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 are people on the fringe who and I'm kind of among them who who would contest that and say you can actually have a a more effective military in a more democratic way. But set that aside. People have agreed that in a mil military setting you put you set aside individual liberties for the sake of the whole and you establish hierarchies and, and rules so that the military can be the mo most effective. When a country is invaded, like everyone and everyone, be it becomes militarized. You know, and you know, we, we talked earlier, you know, I think you were saying earlier that like, there's not a whole lot of difference if, if you know, kind of a Russian oligarchy or a Ukrainian oligarchy is run running Ukraine. A, a key difference is that Russia is currently leveling Ukraine like right. creating a refugee crisis of biblical proportions. So people aren't going to be ruled by oligarchs of any stripe because they're not being ruled at all because they're, they're being be driven dead. out of their country. They're being killed and, well, that's and, because they're, and, the, and so, block by right. block, they're in, the, everything they've built over 30 years is being systemically right. destroyed. Right. They're not doing that because for fun, Russia we invaded have to remember, Ukraine. I get that. Right. But they're not doing it for fun. They're not going there. and They're just blowing stuff up because they think it's fun and cool. They're doing it because they're trying to get Zelensky to the negotiation table to what's reject the, the West. What's the evidence of that? He has said like Zelensky has rejecting. said that he's willing to negotiate. No. And he has. And then he, he goes to the table and then he says, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to negotiate this X, Y, Z thing. So they're not. But so Russia is so Russia's a good faith actor here, but but Zelensky no. is not. No, willing no, no, to no. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. We will right. not sit here and try to put, paint me as some kind of Putin puppet like that's what I'm saying. You, I've not well, what, said okay, that. Then, then restate it. What are you what are you saying that Russia is? up? What to I'm here? saying is that Russia and Ukraine are neighbors and they're related. They're literally related. They have family going back and forth between country to country. So they need to be nice and, and work on good relations with their neighbor. But the West came in in 2014. What did the West do? You know the history of this. But the West they, came in and, and got rid of the, the, the pro-Russian, which is what they've done. Now these 11 but political Kim, parties are pro-Russian parties. But shouldn't you make that pitch parties. to Russia, I guess, is that you're saying, right, they're no. neighbors, they should get along. So isn't, but yeah, isn't I mean, the person right, who should. needs to hear that message right now Vladimir Putin? What is it? So what do you want? So the, right. They have for years. And I've talked about this ad nauseum for 30 years. They've said you cannot bring NATO up to our border. Ukraine basically giving them the big middle finger saying we'll do whatever we want. And then Russia says, well, then you're going to have to pay for that, because, by the way, you've been under our control for since the dawn of time. Now, is that right? No. Ukrainians should have independence. They deserve independence. And I believe Russia will probably ultimately, you know, I mean, maybe not any. It, it might take more years, but Ukraine. I mean, 
you know, the differences between the people are enough that they absolutely should be independent and the people want that independence. So they should have that. It's right. their, it's it's what you know, what they what they want. But the reality of it is the West shouldn't be involved in this. We shouldn't be egging Ukraine on into fighting this, giving them more weapons for Russia to continue to blow up. Russia said they specifically stated we are demilitarizing. So what do we do? We give them more weapons to continue militarizing them so they have more to blow up. So rather than forcing Ukraine into a peaceful position with their very hostile neighbor right at this point who doesn't want to actually be that hostile with them we are instead <laughs> rearming them doesn't want to be that hostile they invaded right. them no they're, they're they related invaded they're related them. <laughs> i get that but there's a reason why they did it and we can't ignore that and just act like uh, but no the, Russia but there's just a reason did why we did it cuz they were the so, like it, 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 to they only start with reason. there's only re- it acts like they're this like it's total. They there's no, no choice, choice. But to, they had, I, I, like there are reasons I mean, we, we did the things that caused it. the reasons yeah. that they do. I there's mean, look, always reasons. We pushed them towards it. We pushed them towards it. I mean, we absolutely pushed them towards it by continuing to inch NATO up to their borders. We can't just forget that and act like that didn't happen. Right. So we, we were both militarizing said that we shouldn't Ukraine. have done that. Right. But it. But they really so shouldn't what have started so killing they, a bunch. So whatever of they. What if they. What if they so nuke then, Kiev? Like so, they're like anything is justified. Yeah. Like what's the line for you? So I is, mean, come is, on. I mean, there are. Are they the going invas- to? For one. Do you think the invasion was justified? No. It, I. I think that. The, okay, I think then that we agree. We were helping Ukraine ask for it, but I don't think. I don't know what else Russia would have done. I don't know what else I could have expected them to do. I think if you poke a bear enough, you, you expect, expect the bear's going to fight back. You, so you didn't expect well, them I didn't to invade, expect, and, I didn't expect them to invade, and right. and you don't think it was justified. So, what are we? Uh, well, what are I, we it's not that I, about? we're disagreeing on the fact that. Uh, well, maybe it, it. I don't know what else Ukraine, what else Russia could have done, besides when you poke a bear, what do you expect to happen? But Russia's not a bear, like a bear. <laughs> Russia's a, a government, and government uh, government should be responsible so what, okay. and not murder people. Like just saying, well, that's so what the government does. You, they beat well, up that's like war is. that, you know, black kids shouldn't have been loitering on the street. They got shot. That's what the government does. Like, no, I don't accept that as a person who is a critic of what governments do. It is illegitimate for governments to murder people. They can they cannot. It is illegitimate for a government to assert that I actually rule this group of people and I will expand the reach of my rule. No, that I reject that. We are governments are comprised of people who should be expected to behave in moral humanitarian ways. And it is wrong. It, the, it is the most obviously wrong thing to murder people. I don't care if they want to no, NATO move too far. Right. We shouldn't have done it. I we agree that like that was a bad tactical move because it it changed Russia's thinking about this or what they have to do, perhaps. But I, I the aspiration of people not to live under the repressive government of Vladimir Putin is a noble and legitimate aspiration. You were the one that was just saying that there's got to be a line somewhere and that at some point we would then attack and go to war with Russia. That's not me. You're the one who said that. So where right, is Russia's line? If they invaded line? us. And Defen- the defensive so- violence is proper. Like if I get if Ryan starts beating me up. And I, and I start fighting yeah, back. Right. Would you say, hey, hey, Robbie, I thought you were against violence. What are you doing? No. Well, <laughs> Ra- that's kind Ryan of what you guys are Russia saying is Ryan Russia. in this scenario. Right. So what do and you expect? And then you say, well, you... but Ryan said he didn't want you sitting over here. He that's said he really didn't like it. He said he really didn't like it. Like, what come do you on. Ex- <laughs> what do you think what should... I would expect what... is Russia not to invade Ukraine. Yeah. Like, just yeah. What do you don't, think they should have done with NATO? What do you if, what do you expect so them to do if NATO nego- keeps go going nego- up to their go border? Negotiate something. If Say, there look, are we- nukes on their front porch, what do you expect them to do about it? What negotiate, is reasonable? Negotiate something. Should so so in your Didn't mind they then? The, 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 so the United States could have just invaded Cuba during the missile crisis. Like we didn't invade Cuba, well, we, we shouldn't have. What, I mean, what we, did we, we, we do did the Bay of Pigs exactly. So come on, let's not forget about that. No, but that wasn't because Russia was involved there. So oh, we shouldn't have done that. Yeah. No, yeah, and we also should not have done that. We shouldn't have done any. We, have, we should not have started a war over any, we provo- allow, any, any, Rush, any Russian provocation. Like We shouldn't r- allow nukes being pointed at us at our border. And I don't think any other country should allow nukes to be pointed at them at their border. I think it's reasonable for them to say, stop doing that. Russia did. Russia asked us for 30 years. This was not like an overnight thing. They asked us for 30 years to stop. So, yeah, I do put a lot of blame squarely on 
NATO expansion on this whole entire thing. And then to sit there and say, well, Russia should have just continued right, to do nothing. Uh, they're telling us uh, we got to go. Look, this is an actual yeah. debate you won't see on any <laughs> any media channel that is either relentlessly one way or the other. We're actually arguing out th this kind of this kind of thing, which is what people want to see. So thank you very much, Kim. And we'll have more rising right after this.